One topic that many of our users seem to struggle with is setting up lighting systems in Bloom Unit. So in this session, we will cover the various methods that you can use to light your Bloom Unit scenes. So to start with, there are five different ways to light your scenes in Bloom Unit. These being 1. Daylighting 2. Bloom Unit Library Luminaires 3. Custom Luminaires 4. Emissive Materials and 5. HDRI Domes But here we will only cover the first four methods leaving HDRI domes for a later session. We start here with a family room scene already lit with daylighting, which is our first option and is entirely controlled by SketchUp Shadow Settings dialog as shown here, where we can interactively change the time of day or month of the year. So here we adjust the time of day to 4 p.m. and watch the blue Unit viewport update accordingly. When we want to switch daylighting off and go to nighttime conditions, we simply uncheck the Use Sun for Shading checkbox. Now for option 2, we need to open up the Bloom Unit Luminaire Manager and select light fittings from one of our real world manufacturers listed there. Here we will select our first luminaire from the Concord Sylvania range, a 27 watt LED impact downlight and simply drag and drop this unit onto our ceiling in our SketchUp model and view the corresponding lighting change in our Bloom Unit viewport. After making a quick adjustment to our camera exposure, we then insert a 24 watt LED Motif light fitting and using the aim light option from the context menu, we aim this spotlight towards the drawers in the island bench. Though the limitations of using these library luminaires is firstly, the available range of light fittings is currently quite small and secondly, none of their lighting parameters can be edited or changed. This is to ensure that the lighting performance shown in Bloom Unit will match its real world equivalent. So this brings us to option 3, creating and using custom luminaires, which can be a very straightforward process, especially if you are happy to use the default settings. For this option, and with the Bloom Unit Luminaire Manager still open, you click on the Custom tab, then the Add button, where a unique New Custom Light Definition name will appear in the list space above, which you can easily rename. And in this case, we'll pick DL-A for Downlight A. With this new Custom Luminaire, a set of default parameters will be displayed in the right-hand panel. And if you choose not to initially change any of these parameters, then all you need to do now is click the place button and drag and drop your new downlight onto any horizontal surface in your scene. And if you have the Bloom Unit session running, you'll see the lighting contribution from your new luminaire within a few seconds. The default setting for all new custom luminaires is using an IS file with a medium to wide distribution with a circular light source area of 100 millimeters or 4 inch diameter shown as a radius of 0.05 meters and a rated lamp output value of 500 lumens which is derived from the default IES file. However the big advantage of custom luminaires over Bloom Unit library luminaires is that all of these parameters can be easily and interactively changed to give you the exact lighting system you need for your scene. With the custom luminaire panel still open, you can change the IES file, which provides the shape of your light's distribution. This is done by clicking the Browse button, which will take you to a directory with a list of sample IES files that comes with Bloom Unit, and with names indicating the general light distribution type. Or if you have your own set of IES files elsewhere, you can simply navigate to that location and just open your chosen IES file to set the required light distribution. First up, we change our default IES file to another with a very narrow beam and view the resulting change within seconds in the Bloom Unit viewport.
Next we change to a wide beam distribution. And finally we change back to our default distribution which is wide underscore 2 dot IES. Using the drop down arrow on the area light type you have a choice of light source shapes which are none for a point source, disc which is the current setting, rectangle and sphere. And depending on which one you select the appropriate dimension controls will then appear. Here we will select the source shape as rectangle and change the size to 0.3 meters by 1 meter and again view the change to our light source shape and size in both the SketchUp and Bloom Unit viewports. It is worth noting each dimension control is displayed as both a slide and a value entry box. The slide control offers a limited range of value but the entry box will let you insert any value. If you need the light contribution from your custom luminaire but want to hide the light source itself at the same time, then you can check the hide source checkbox, though this is not common practice. Now if you click the output tab at the bottom of the center panel, you will find firstly the option to change the light source color temperature with the most common values being 3000K or 4000K. Here we change the source color from 3000 to 4000 K and you should see the light color change to match the other luminaires in the scene which are also 4000 K. But some care should be taken in changing these values as the camera white balance setting may also need to be adjusted to more accurately display the results which is controlled with the AWB or Auto White Balance drop down menu along the top of the Bloom Unit viewport. Then we have the lamp lumen or lamp output setting which is initially set from the data listed in the chosen IES file which in this case is 500 lumens but can be easily changed to any value to suit your requirements. So here we change this lamp output value to 5000 lumens and again make an adjustment to the camera exposure setting. And to further demonstrate the seamless flexibility of our new lighting system here we create a copy of our edited custom luminaire and view the result. Then we delete these instances from our scene in preparation for demonstrating our fourth Bloom Unit lighting option, Light Emitting Materials. Light Emitting Materials is a very flexible and useful lighting option, particularly if you do not want to bother with the complication of IES files, light source settings, color temperatures or white balance adjustments that come with using library or custom luminaires. For this option, we first need to create our emissive material by opening the Bloom Unit Material Manager, as shown here. Click on the Custom tab, then press the Add button to immediately create a new custom material entry, and as with the custom luminaire process, we can easily rename this new material. Here we call LEM underscore one. Next, we click on the Emission tab listed in the center section and enter any starting Lerman output value, 100 is a good number, and we have now created our first emissive material. Now we will draw a rectangular and circular shape on our ceiling to act as our lighting surfaces. Then we simply paint these shapes with our new light emissive material and watch for the result. One issue that may arise is that depending in which direction the shapes were drawn, it is possible for the light to be emitted from the back surface and not be seen. This is easily remedied by checking the opposite face in the direction section of the emission dialog panel as shown here. We can also easily and interactively change the color of the emitted light at any time. Here we change from white to a mid-red color and also change the lumen output value to 1000. Next we change the light color to a full red. Then changing to a full blue light color.
and now we paint a whole wall section with our blue emissive material which certainly creates a very dramatic effect. However, emissive materials will only work if iRay Photo Reel is set in the Bloom Unit Render Settings dialog. With iRay Interactive, all surfaces painted with these emissive materials will appear suitably bright, but no light will be emitted into your scene from any of these surfaces. So this covers the four main options available for setting up and refining your lighting system for any type of Bloom Unit scene, and we hope that you have found this information to be helpful. We finish here by demonstrating the incredible flexibility of Bloom Unit and the ease of combining all these options to meet your most demanding lighting system needs. If you have any questions at all or need any further information, please do not hesitate to contact our team using the links below. And if you haven't done so already, please visit our website at bloomunit.com for a free 14-day trial. Thank you.